Hi, it's Jane with Scraptastic Yarns Podcast. Today is Vlogtober the 8th, and it's Columbus Day, or Indigenous Day, or whatever they're going to change it to the next time we have to be politically correct. So, um, you know, I don't need yarn, but of course I had to buy yarn. So, I got six of these skeins of Vanna's Choice in the, it's called Purple Mist, got six of these. Um, I have a shawl in mind. We went to AC Moore. Now, granted, my husband actually purchased a pair of shoes. I looked when we were at the uh, Gander Outdoor, it used to be Gander Mountain, and I could not find anything that I liked or actually that felt decent. So he bought a new pair of shoes, and of course when he buys a new pair of shoes, if I don't get a new pair of shoes, I have to get yarn. That's the rule. Okay, I just made that up. Um, they had, at AC Moore, they had Simply Soft, yeah, four for $10, so I got five, and the reason I got five is because I plan on mixing these together for a project, and then I have I have not seen this in my local Walmart, but I think it's absolutely stunning. I don't know what I'm going to use it for. It'll probably go for a shawl. But the Anemone colorway, they had these on sale for $6.99. So I got two of those. Um, that is all the yarn that I got at AC Moore. And, you know, I had to get my 1,000 pinwheel points or points or wherever they are, you know, so I can get my $10 reward, and then I'll be able to go back and buy $10 more of yarn, because I need yarn like a hole in the head. I'm a yarn addict. I'm, my name is Jane. I'm a yarn addict. I belong to Yarn Addicts Anonymous, and my life has become unmanageable with tons of yarn. Not only that, but my whips have become unmanageable. I was looking over here to the side of the chair. Now granted, I'm always making baby hats, so I know there's a bag always set aside for baby hats. But seriously folks, I've got like eight projects over here that I've started, set aside. So, not only am I yeah, well, you know, maybe I should have a uh, sheet that shows poundage of yarn in versus poundage of yarn out. <laughs> That's an idea. Keep track of it. Have a clue. But I decided with all these projects, I'm, I'm re-evaluating those goals I'd set at the beginning of the year. And basically, I failed at them. Imagine that. I can succeed in all kinds of things, but when it comes to projects, I'm telling you, I have craft ADD. I start one project and I'll work on it a little bit, and then I get bored or I see something online that someone's making and I want to make it too. So instead of putting it, you know, like in a queue of things to do after I've finished items, I'll start it. So, my goal till the end of the year is to work on these whips and to get them in, get them finished, get them out of here so I don't have this huge pile of whips at the side of my chair driving me nuts. I'm going to need lots of encouragement, folks. Lots and lots of encouragement. 
bingo prizes for the bingo tomorrow or ready to go. Um, I do use the AC Moore bags. They're nice big bags. They're, um, they sell them a dollar each. They have them year round, you know, different seasons, those kind of things. So, I use those to carry the bingo prizes. Um, my girlfriend and I have been the bingo queens for, this is coming up on the second year. At December will be our second full year. However, we have decided we are ready to retire and to let them move on to someone else. Um, so that's what we're planning on doing. So in January, someone else will be taking over the bingo queen, king, whatever it is for prizes. Which, to be honest, that is going to be something that is fantastic. It'll be off my plate less stress each month you know generally I do specials and I have to worry about those kind of things for specials and you know some months you get enough to pay for the specials other months you don't so you kind of dip into your own pocket and quite frankly I'm tired of dipping into my own pocket so I will be moving on from there I did want to tell you I have seen a couple of new podcasts and I wanted to let you know about those and one of those is Melissa Kreider Yaks and Melissa has some health, health issues but she talks quite frankly about those health issues and um, She is currently in the hospital. I'm hoping that she is out by now and doing much better. She does knitting, crochet, and, you know, a little of this, a little of that. So, um, go check her out. And then there's Cindy at Freeze Baby Fiber Frolic. <laughs> I wanted to try to get that um, pronounced correctly. Um, Cindy does mostly knitting only, um, but she has some beautiful projects. She, um, you know, I like knitting and crochet, um, so I do watch a little of everything. And she is one that I have just found, and I have done quite a bit of watching a lot of her videos. And also, there is Kayla at Llama Mama. And I did not realize that she was doing loom knitting. Um, I have seen, you know, when someone subscribes to this podcast, I try to go see if they have videos so that I can see what they're into. And, you know, I try to share those shout outs with you, mainly because I think it's a great way to spread this crafting community. And... You know, they do some great work. Kayla has some beautiful work that she has done in loom knitting. I do loom knit. I don't loom knit as much as I used to. There was a period in my life when I had um, what was called, they thought, frozen shoulder syndrome. Which, you know, I am diabetic and they thought it was because of the diabetes. And I could not get my arms above this, about this high without extreme pain. I had trouble knitting, I had trouble crocheting, but for some reason I could loom knit. So I did a lot of loom knitting, um, shawls, hats, scarves, mittens, you name it, um, toys. So loom knitting has always been a favorite. Um, however, when I did finally go see the rheumatologist and he was injecting my shoulders, I was doing physical therapy. And during the physical therapy, they were doing passive range of motion. And it was killing me. I would leave home in tears because of how much pain there was with that. Um, with the rheumatologist, they assigned me a new rheumatologist at Geisinger at that point. And this fella came in 
And he said, you know, we've never had any x-rays. So he insisted on getting x-rays. Of course, it was a PA student that had been injecting my shoulders um, through, you know, underneath the uh, supervision of the doctor, which I never saw a doctor until the new doctor was assigned. And when he got the, he went over to the x-rays, and they had me set outside the room because they do digital x-rays at Geisinger, and they wanted to make sure they got a good picture. They immediately sent up something to the physician. He sent me over to an MRI that day, same day. They fit me in. They had a cancellation, so he sent me over to the MRI. What they had discovered is Earlier, before the frozen shoulder had started, I was walking down the stairs in our house, and I fell halfway down the stairs on my bottom. I did break my tailbone. That's the only x-ray we did. I did catch myself with the, with the guide, with the stairwell, you know, the rails. Um, and I had noticed that the pain had started after that. You know, we didn't really think about it because at that time the gastroparesis was its worst. And, you know, you, all these things come up with diabetes. So the doctor just assumed it was frozen shoulder. I had actually torn both of my rotator cuffs at that point when I had fallen down the stairs catching myself. Now this is probably six months later that I'm getting these injections and I've been going through this physical therapy. What they found is the tears had pretty much healed themselves, so I didn't need surgery. However, there is still some damage in there. I do have a little bit of pain when I do certain things, but they had chosen they're not going to do surgery. And you guessed it. The physical therapy with the passive range of motion was actually doing more damage to that. So they stopped that. They changed the physical therapy to something else. Um, I've healed. Like I said, I do have a couple of issues sometimes, but I no longer have problems with putting coats, clothes on, because you know you can't get your hands up like this. It's hard to put clothes on can't bring them back to your back and around and touch your butt, you can imagine the kind of problems that you have. And so putting on a jacket was pure agony. But I, you know, my husband and I, we still worked and I still did it. And, you know, so my thing now has been with all the doctors, let's double check things from now on because I could have saved myself a lot of trouble, a lot of pain, and a lot of tears. And I do mean it was agony during that passive range of motion. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty strong when it comes to physical pain. I can put up with a lot, um, but that was that was out of this world. So, anyway, I hope you will give those guys a look-see. I'm always on the lookout for more. Like I said, when someone um, signs up for, you know, joins the podcast as a subscriber, I always go to see if they have one. I don't know why I didn't do that with um, Llama Mama. Um, the only thing I can think of is that it may have been when I was getting ready for the big trip to Niagara Falls, and I was just out of my mind with, you know, rush, rush, hurry, hurry, get things done. So, uh, so everybody, remember to take good care of yourselves and also to enjoy the day. I will see you again tomorrow. And above all, remember to be kind.